According to the University of Calgary, roughly 150 billion stars are born each year. Based on my model, flat Earth is a habitable star. It's the field resistance of the planet's magnetic field cycle against the south planetary dipole which generates an electrical charge from the spark that field resistance creates. It's the spark and increased electrical output that makes me feel confident calling flat Earth a star. If flat Earth is a star and roughly 150 billion stars are born each year, then what's the process that creates flat planetary stars? The cosmological egg to the right shows the pyramid of life. Spherical exoplanetary seeds are forged where the cosmic string, the negative entanglement cycles linear release of dielectric particles, and the exospheric dipole cancellation charge converge within the spindle vortex. When an exoplanetary seed is ripe, it's released from the spindle vortex on a trajectory with the cosmic string until a barrier exists. The cosmic string leads the seed down to the next star system in series. Spherical exoplanets are forged with a magnetic field prior to releasing from the spindle vortex and maintains the electrical charge from the spindle vortex to the solar system. Exoplanets orbit around the sun within the heliosphere, while flat Earth only spins around on its axis. The heliosphere represents the top of the pyramid of life. The tip of the pyramid is called the heliosheath. The first line of the pyramid represents the heliopause which aligns with the sun located in the termination shock. The second line represents the heliospheric current sheath. The third line represents the planet itself. Then we're back to the bottom line of the pyramid where exoplanetary seeds are forged. If an exoplanetary seed can align with the cosmic string and the heliospheric current sheet and hold the charge between the positive electromagnetic charge of the mother star system and the negative dielectric charge of the father star system, the force of both charges aligned with the cosmic string flattens a spherical seed into a flat planetary magnet. However, the flattening process is only one of the steps a seed takes to reach the superconductive state required to become a star system. The flattening process is an important step because it initiates dipole entanglement by decreasing the distance between surface dipoles under the force of extreme pressure. The initiation of dipole entanglement initiates dipole cancellation entanglement which occurs around the outer circumference on the planet cancelling out dipole entanglement. The positive dipole entanglement cycle represents the planet's magnetic field cycle and was modeled after Einstein's energy mass equivalence equation. The mass of the planet times the current density of field lines passing internally between planetary dipole equals the electrical output the system can generate. However, field lines cannot spindle until the mass of the planet has increased to a point where field resistance begins to occur against the south planetary dipole. The external charge created from dipole cancellation entanglement around the outer circumference of the planet applies electrical growth to the mass of the planet and over the distance of time will continue to grow until field lines have spindled and the electrical crucifixion has occurred. Young systems utilize the electrical charge supplied by the cosmic string to increase their electrical growth, until field lines can spindle. The spindle's increased electrical output gives back to the cosmic string to help feed young systems. A black hole is a young system that has yet to spindle its magnetic field lines. The magnetic field around any magnetic source looks increasingly like the field of a magnetic dipole as the distance from the source increases. The horn torus represents the field geometry surrounding a young system. Both dipole entanglement cycles utilize angular intake and linear release to generate dual jet streams. After the electrical crucifixion of spindling field lines occurs, the north jet stream will stop as the heliosphere forms, creating an electrical fuse between two superconducting star systems connected to the same cosmic string. A star system is an electromagnetic superconductor that requires zero electrical resistance, until the system's field lines can spindle field resistance will continue to be present against the south planetary dipole. As field resistance increases the young system draws power from the cosmic string to help maintain zero electrical resistance until the system can supply itself the required electrical output necessary to maintain zero electrical resistance. 
The electrical crucifixion allows the newly formed star system's field cycle to expand prior to entering the magnet in order to hold the generated electrical output. The electrical charge generated by the spindle vortex flows with the positive entanglement cycle and electrically charges every polar vortex layer of field lines emerging from the north planetary dipole. The polar vortex layer of field lines that aligns just beyond the outer circumference of the planet passes through dipole cancellation entanglement. The increased electrical outputs applied to dipole cancellation entanglement that's not needed by the planet's continued growth is attracted back to the cosmic string in the wake of the rising system. Since the star system and cosmic string are both superconductors, the star system continues to attempt to repel the cosmic string by accelerating along the cosmic string. This is because superconductors are purely diamagnetic and repel other applied electrical and magnetic fields. It was 1929, when Edwin Hubble discovered the accelerating universe. That same year Albert Einstein abandoned his cosmological constant theory, but to think that Einstein was just attempting to explain the systematic how to what Hubble was observing in his telescope. Planetary acceleration pushes the planet from underneath, against the south planetary dipole. If the south dipole represents planetary lift against the surface, then the north surface experiences gravitational attraction to the surface. Planetary acceleration to gravitational attraction is the force that holds sea level and layers the atmosphere like layers in a cake. Only as a star system can its heliospheric egg allow the pyramid of life to exist. The formation of the heliosphere represents the formation of a cosmological uterus. The location where seeds become planets.